everyone and welcome to the Beta Group uh, YouTube session. So it's the third one with this time Jérémy Levan, who's a rock star here in the Belgium. Uh, I want to say the States, <laughs> no, no, Belgium, yeah. Uh, because he sold his company for $100 million to Microsoft last year. And we're going to understand the sunrise to Microsoft. We're going to understand how uh, he did that, you know, the process from the early stage, from the idea to, to up till now. Uh, because also it's, it's kind of the end for sunrise mm -hmm. to be visible. So it's kind of the sun down. The sunset. Yeah. Sunset, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> uh, and so we're going to uh, make some chapters. Uh, so the acquisition with the background, but also uh, the exit with uh, Microsoft, the whole process, and then the after. Microsoft. So here we go. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. <laughs> sure. Thank you for being here. So let's talk about the background. Yes. Uh, Jeremy, so you're coming from uh, a designer background. Yes. So you study here in yes. uh, Belgium, but mm -hmm. also in San Francisco. Uh, yes. So I, I, yeah. So I, I originally didn't know what to what to study um, after high school. Um, so I was thinking, you know, about you know going for a business school or you know more marketing. I've always been interest, interested in technology, uh, web, um, some design, and eventually found out about a design school here in Brussels called TAD. Um, went for web design there for about two years, and then after going through a couple of internships, realized, mm, you know, maybe I want to explore something else. Um, so eventually found a, a school, a design school. Um, in San Francisco, um, where I, I kept working on or studying, um, you know, design for web more specifically, because mobile wasn't around back then in 2007. Um, I feel like I'm I'm old when I'm saying this, but mobile is still very new. So, um, so yeah, so I happen to be kind of in the right spot, right people. Um. So that was San Francisco, yes. and then you moved up to New York. Yes. A couple of and years after. Well, I'm working for uh, Foursquare. Foursquare. Exactly. So um, eventually landed a job at Foursquare. Um, it was right at the time when uh, social uh, location and mobile were big um, and growing. And, and I found a great opportunity to meet and work with great people at Foursquare. Um, and also kind of like to, my, my goal was really to learn. You know, I, lear I stayed in San Francisco for about four years. I felt like I had a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Met tons of people uh, and then eventually wanted to do the same in New York and see how different it was just to explore something else. New York is still a big city and fascinating city. And how different it is? Um, good question. I, it's, uh, you know, on one side, on one side of the spectrum, you have San Francisco, which is obviously very focused on tech, um, universities, like very academic in a way. Um, and it feels in a way very much like a campus, you know, like a big campus, a city in itself. Like everyone works in the startup industry or um, at a big company still in tech, uh, Google, Apple, Facebook. Um, and then on the other hand of, uh, on the other side of the spectrum, you have some, uh, New York, which is a different vibe, has a different, you know, mentality, um, people working in finance, uh, uh, law, you have a, Couple of, I mean, you have arts, a lot of lawyers, yeah. uh, arts, design, fashion, uh, tech, which is growing. So, so it's uh, it's very fascinating, and I feel to me, and again, like it's very personal. I feel like New York is a better place to build products, at least for the consumer, because you're in a city. And I think as a designer, uh, and I think everyone, you know, when you build product, you want to be surrounded with people. You want to know what the pain points are and how to fix them. So you need to be there with real, real problems to fix. Okay, so you, you thought that New York um, is much more interesting in terms of uh, feedback from, exactly. uh, from the users or potential users. I feel sometimes, and again, that's my personal views, I feel sometimes San Francisco is maybe too much focused on uh, their own problems. I mean, it feels great, you know, there is, when you go to San Francisco, you feel there's an app for everything, yeah. literally, you know, dry cleaning, for <laughs> yes, you know, sure. housekeeping, I mean, and it's great, and it's, it's, it's so, you, f you feel like you live in the, in the future, and that's great, but on the other hand, New York is more real, it's, you know, you have like different, you know, categories, and it's, it's just a different vibe, so yeah. I, I like it better. 
And also there is San Francisco and the Silicon Valley, yes. so which is also yeah, also kind very of different. different. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, San Francisco you know, again, like more like a city. The valleys, it's it's interesting. You 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 have to you have to go there to understand yeah, what's going to on to experience the whole thing. Exactly. So okay, you were working for Foursquare for a year and four months, something like that. And that's where you met uh, your future uh, co-founder. Yes, exactly. So we worked at Foursquare for about a, a bit less than a year and a half together. With Pierre Valad. With P Pierre Valad, yeah, exactly, on the same team. So it helped us to validate at least the fact that we liked working together, which is not always easy to find people that you connect with and you want to work with them. So those things are very important when you, when you start a company. And how came up the idea? Um, the idea actually started in a cab um, out of nowhere. You know, we'll, we were on our way to a conference called South by Southwest. Uh, in Austin, te in Austin Texas. exactly, Texas um, tech conference. Um, and that was back in 2012. Looked at our phones. That was right at the time when Instagram was growing, Spotify. All of these services were really growing. And, and we noticed, well, you know, you buy a phone. As soon as you get out of the Apple store, as soon as you get out of the store, you you, you, you immediately, immediately download apps. And you use, most of the time replace the core apps, as we call them, like um, your phone, um, messaging, all of these apps, um, contact book, you, you replace them with other apps, third party apps. So your music, you would use Spotify or SoundCloud. Uh, and then for the camera, you would maybe use FiscoCam or, or Instagram. So you would use all these third par party apps and we felt like, well, wait, the calendar hasn't changed that much. Um, and it's still very, it, f it feels like kind of like a, a, a piece, of, um, piece of history. Um, so we, we, we quickly realized, well, maybe there's an opportunity to improve the calendar. No one has, we looked at a couple of options, we didn't really see anything striking. Okay, so you were working at Foursquare yeah. and on the side for about how, how long? Six months. Six months, okay, yes. you were working on yeah, the side yes. with your, your colleague there. Yeah. And so you, you did validate the idea exactly. outside and... Uh, yeah, we, we talked to users. We talked to a couple of uh, people uh, just to get a sense of, you know, are we solving a real problem? It, or is this just, you know, us making a, a problem? Did you do some kind of uh, landing pages? Uh, we, no, we started, so Sunrise, why do we, did we call it Sunrise in the first place? Um, we started with an email digest. So it wasn't an, an app because, you know, we, we have our job at Foursquare and I'm, I'm sure a ton of people, you know, work at jobs. They want to do something on the side during weekends or in the evenings. Building an app takes a lot of time, so we're thinking, let's make something easier. So we started making a digest, an email digest that we would send out every morning at 6 a.m. That's why we call it Sunrise, because it's the first thing in the morning you want to experience. See, it's inspiring. Um, it's not called candor, it's called Sunrise. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we had a, a mindset more oriented towards like making it inspiring. It's about your day, it's about you. It's very personal, so let's make something beautiful. And we, we, we emailed essentially people their calendar with their events. Like, oh, Julie, today you have five meetings, one with this person, this person, then you have birthday party and birthdays, etc. So. so you start to be stressed very early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about your day. <laughs> but your exactly. Day. So, okay, so you, you validated uh, your, your product, your idea at least. Yes. You had something kind of in that direction coming up, but yes. then you, you pivot uh, on the way. Uh, how, that work, how did that work with um, Foursquare? So uh, at a certain point, you, you had to leave? Yes, yeah, yeah you have to leave, exactly. There's how a tipping point. How do you make that, you know, that transition? Because it's um, kind well, of the first, the first thing is, so you have a job, and I'm sure, I mean, that's how most people start. You know, you have a job, or you're about, you're about to leave your job. You want to start something new. You're not just going to leave like that, I mean, unless you have another plan or you have something in mind, uh, or you know you're, you really hate your job and you want to leave, that's another question. So for us, we wanted to keep kind of like the secu security. I mean, we have our jobs, we're, you know, quote unquote, kind of happy. Um, not ev with everything, but you know, enough to stay there. And then we realized, well, at some point, either our users or, you know, there's something that happened. And to us, it was mostly our users. They were asking, for, uh, they were asking us to build an app. Ah, okay. So they told us, oh, it's really cool you build this email. Uh, 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 and I get it every day. Uh, by the way, just to give you some idea of the email, uh, we send out, we had about uh, 30,000 people signed up on the email. Wow. Just an email. 
Um, why did we send it at uh, 6 a.m. too? We wanted to be the first email yeah. you get in the morning. Um, and we would use uh, your Facebook connection to know where you are in the world. So if you travel and you connect to Facebook, we update your, tra your time zone. So we can always be at 6 a.m. in your time zone. Nice, yeah. Um, and so eventually we realized, well, people were asking, build an app, this is great, but it's just an email. And that was kind of the time when we realized, okay, we've been working on this. We know people have a problem. They want us to fix it. Okay, it, so after, it was pretty clear. Mm -hmm. After six months' time, you get to get 30,000 users. users. Yes. Well, not, uh, half of them were using it, so 15 on a daily basis, 15K. And we had no press or no, you know, it was just an email. Um, okay, so did you raise money before leaving Foursquare? Or did you? Uh, that was right at the time. The so by the time we left Foursquare, we raised a uh, convertible note, which is, um, for those who don't know, it's you essentially raise some money, uh, friends, family, or you know, individuals who are willing to give you some money. And um, fools. Sorry? And fools. <laughs> and fools, yeah. exactly. Uh, to give you some money to get started. And you won't put a valuation on the company right away. So it doesn't put pressure on, on the founders or on the founding team. And you get to get some money to get start started. And then um, it, that's why it's called a convertible note, because it converts once you raise uh, on the next terms. Okay. So when we raised our seed round, that's when the convertible note got... Um, C, so, but, but the convertible was the A? No, uh, no, 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 con so, no, so convertible happened at the very beginning, yeah. and then the seed round and after, yeah. and then the series A happened. Ah, okay. So, yeah, and, and but it's, it's just the name to... Yeah. How much did you raise? Uh, at the, the time we, we had, I mean, we were lucky and we had, you know, some great um, investors at the very beginning, we raised about 200,000 okay. uh, US dollars. That's just dollars. your, your, your very close uh, <laughs> oh, circle. E exactly. So people who believed in us, they believed in Pierre, they believed in me. Like you said, you know, f uh, some people were, you know, they, 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 at, that, at that time you have an ID, you have yeah. an app, you have something very... And it's early. just the two of you? Uh, yes. For, for one year or something like that? Uh, no, then uh, we, we, f we, got, we got lucky, we found Joey, uh, our first employee. Uh, Joey was, he was about to graduate college, so um, at university, and he was about to, to graduate, so very, I mean, he had almost no experience, only internships. So back-end or? Uh, he was uh, focused on iOS, uh, iOS iPhone okay. and iPad, um, and he didn't, to be, to be honest, he, he didn't really know that much. He still was learning, so, so we hired him because he was willing to take the job with almost no pay, and yeah, you know, that was very a perfect scrappy. match. Exactly. Okay. Because you, you don't have much money to pay people, so you have to start small. So for, for how long uh, did you think <coughs> it could last for uh, we, kn we knew We knew with 200k, I mean, back then, I forgot to mention, we came back to Europe because it made no sense for us to stay in New York, you know. Belgium? We came to, we started in Brussels, then we went to Paris because Pierre is from Paris, so we... It was good for Pierre to explore Belgium and Brussels and Joey too. So we took Joey with us. Nice. Um, and, and we started working here in um, Brussels in Uccle, uh for, for a couple of weeks, uh, hacking away during the winter. <laughs> so that's how it started. And we, yeah, we were working on, 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 um, on the app like nonstop, getting feedback. Um, and uh, we knew with the money when the goal was to eventually go back to the US. So we essentially we wanted to use the money for visa purposes to build a company structure wise, uh, pay you know lawyers and stuff. So not really for salary purposes. So it could essentially last as long as we were able to, to work for free. I mean, yeah, for yeah, yeah. no pay essentially. Like six months or? Uh, yeah, a few months. Month. Actually, for us it took. Uh, yeah, let's say yeah we we raised in January. So by May we raised another round, the seed round. So. So about five months. Exactly. At the seed rounds, okay, yeah. okay, four months, and um, okay, and then we raised. Know. Then after in May we raised um, two million with a, a, a venture capital um, of funds, so professional investors and also an another uh, round of uh, angels, business angels who are willing to put some money. And from your first seed, you moved back to the states. Uh, yes. So after, so right after the. Convergible Node worked on the app. We launched the app to the public in 2013, uh, in early 2013, and you know got you know some some traction. With that traction, we went to see investors, and then we raised. And then in the meantime, we while we raised, we were 
moving to, to back to New York. To New York, yes. okay, and not San Francisco. No, exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so you raised altogether 8.2 million dollars. Exa exactly. Uh, but it, it came from 17 investors. Yes. Uh, so, is there any tips? Is that not too many investors to? Yeah. to well, for us, we we're first of all, uh, our, um, it might seem a lot. But to, to us, first of all, we were never greedy about shares, about thinking, oh, wait, we, we're going to have too many investors, and then it means giving away too many shares. We just wanted to be surrounded with the best people. We wanted to have people who were working at other big companies who could give us t tips. And in order to be involved, they either have, need to invest or have advisory shares. They need to be involved somehow. If they're not involved, they didn't put money down, or they, they don't have shares in return. Uh, even as an advisor, they're not going to be interested in helping you in a way. So, so we, we had about three, total three, four fun, pro professional investors, VCs, uh, funds, but uh, all the other ones were just angels working at different company. You know, people at Facebook, Google, uh, LinkedIn, um, et cetera, just to get surrounded with the best people. Okay, so uh, feedbacks, possible. a lot exactly. of feedbacks. And knowing because they, most of the people even at that, I mean, at those companies or VC firms, maybe went through acquisition, they might have gone through um, raising capital and launching products. So we wanted to make sure that we were surrounded with people who knew w what we were going to get into. And if we had questions, we could, we're kind of like mentors. Yeah. We want to be surrounded with mentors and people who know how to do things. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so for you, you don't have any tips in terms of finding I, the right investors? I think you want to, you definitely don't want necessarily to be greedy. I think you want to find the right people. First of all, it's a human fit. If you, you know, if money can be found, quote unquote, anywhere. I think it's all about finding the right people, right mindset, who really understand what you're doing or believe in the team. Especially at the beginning, when you start an idea, I mean, you're, I, everyone has ideas, but at the same time, it's really the team that people need to believe in. And I think a lot of people were investing in PR and I and the team more than in the ID because they didn't. A lot of people did, didn't realize, you know, how big Candor was, or they didn't ever thought about it. But when we came with the ID, they were like, mm, "This is interesting." So definitely, I would say try to surround yourself with people who understand the market or what you're trying to build. Um, it's yeah, it's first and foremost uh, mm -hmm. human experience. Yeah, and so uh, how many of you were working on the project by, uh, by your last? Uh, like when we right before the acquisition, we were about uh, 17, uh, spread onto into two different offices. So most mostly in New York, and we had a team in Paris as well. So Paris, why? Because Pierre is from Paris. Um, we ha it was a good way also to recruit because. Again, you, you're in New York, you're in Silicon Valley or San Francisco, it's hard to find people, talents. I mean, find, you know, how to hire designers, how to hire engineers, et cetera, uh, marketing. So it just opens up opportunities to hire people in Euro Europe. Sure. And cheaper in Europe, you would um, say? Yes, definitely. Um, because wages, salaries are lower. Yeah. Um, And how did you split the work? We were a d distributed team, so we, we've been very, um, much influenced by Buffer. Some of you may know about Buffer. Buffer is a company that uh, works on a product that allows you to send social media updates, so like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., cetera, um, uh, through the tool. And so they, they've been building a product with a, a very good business for the past five years, even more. And they're distributed, they're all over the world. So they, they blog a lot about it. And it's great because For us, it was an inspiration how to work. You, you just split the work, and you need to find workflows to make it work. But I, I've worked with a lot. I think it's the future. You know, you, you, you might find great people in Finland. You might find great sure. people in Belgium. In But how to split the work? You, 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 you know, it's like the, the developers <laughs> yeah. are in Paris, and then the designers in New you, you York. Just, or you just need to put a very solid process. Mm. Um, something I forgot to mention is before Pierre and I left Foursquare, we talked a lot about our uh, workflow, about how does How should the team work? Le left uh, Foursquare or? Right, before we left Foursquare okay. to build Sunrise, Pierre and I thought a lot about how do people work together? How can we work from different locations, from Paris, from New York? How, we do, how do we distribute the work and all of that? It's, it's very much a lot, a lot about how, make to, how do you make people efficient? Yeah. And you have to find the right process. So it's, again, like it's kind of like a recipe. For us, it was really about the tools you're using, if you use the right tools. 
especially today you have Slack, you have you know, uh, you have um, Google Docs, you, you have GitHub. I mean, there are so many ways to collaborate, Trello, etc. Uh, we ha we've, we had our own recipe; it worked for us. I'm not saying it's the only recipe, uh, but it works really well for us, I think. Okay, nice. And now we know the secret <laughs> recipe: how to exit for one million dollar. Okay. Right, let, let, let's take Microsoft. So, Jeremy, tell us, you're working hard with your team in Paris, in New York, uh, maybe a little bit in Belgium, uh, and, and out of a sudden, uh, you, you have somebody knocking at your door mm -hmm. and say, hey guys, do you want to sell? So, how came that process? How came that uh, fairy, you know? <laughs> it's um, kind of surreal. I, I think a couple of things, just to mention first, uh, put some context, context around it. Ever since we started Sunrise, we've, and I think for a lot of companies out there, or many companies out there, um, we've had opportunities to get acquired, and mostly ac acqui acquisitions um, for, for talent, for the team, not for the product, uh, which in most of the cases you see happening, you know, a team gets acquired because they have great people and they want to get a team. Um, so we, we've had a couple, you know, in the past, opportunities. way before opportunities, way before Microsoft came around. We always denied them because we still want to, you know, keep going. I mean, you know, it's your idea, it's your baby. You want to at least try it, and even if you fail, it's okay. It's part of the process. Um, so yeah, so we we worked on, like you said, we worked on it. We we're heads down and super focused, laser focused, and then eventually, um, it might, might sound strange, but Someone from Microsoft, um, and not just partnerships, you know, just someone who works on partnerships at Microsoft, uh, emailed me on LinkedIn. <laughs> we had no connection. We, it wasn't even through an investor. It wasn't like we were, raising, uh, we were running out of money and we had to find an exit. We weren't set for that, so we, it, it just happened. And they came by, they emailed us, uh, emailed me like, Hey Jeremy, you're working on Sunrise. This looks cool. Like, can we chat and know more about you know the product, what you're doing, your roadmap? And then eventually, um, we had a call uh, with Microsoft, talked to them, and they said, "Oh well, just you know, we explained them over the phone uh, for a couple of minutes, and then eventually they said, well, you know what? We want to send a team from Seattle, Redmond headquarters, uh, from Microsoft to New York, and we want to meet with your team. And at the time, we didn't know they wanted to buy us, or acquire." No number, nothing. But that's, it's, that's it's something you wanted to happen at some, some um, point. To be honest, yes and no. I mean, we had no expectations. We didn't really, really? know. I, I, know, I, I totally, I, I mean, I, I'm fully committed with that idea. It's, we had no expectations whatsoever. We're just thinking about if we have an exit, like you know, the one we had, it's, it's amazing. We never thought about it. You know, Pierre and I were just chatting about, you know, sometimes, oh, what if, you know. But you see those things in, you know, on blogs, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you kind of quote unquote dream about it or think about it, but not too hard. You're just focused on your product. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you realize, well, you want to make a business out of it. You want to, because I forgot to mention, Sunrise was a free app. So we didn't generate yeah, any revenue. Exactly. And so, how many subscribers at that time? Uh, we had about uh, two million and a half. Two million, yes. Um, um, signed up. Um, we had, you know, pretty high engagement. Um, All over the world? Or yes, okay. worldwide. Mostly actually in Japan. I mean, US and then Japan, Germany. Yeah, all over the place. So we had to translate our app in different languages, etc. Very passionate community. Um, and yeah, we were working on this product, on this pro on Sunrise, on this problem. Um, and we wanted to build a business, so we never really thought about selling the company at first. We were thinking, okay, let's find ideas now. How can we sell Sunrise to the user so that everyone pays for it? And Absolutely, yeah. So you build business, right? You have to generate revenue. And, and then Microsoft came, came and we never had the opportunity to think about it. But okay. so, such a luxury. Yes, exactly. But it's, it, it just happened. I think also Microsoft did their work. They looked at options out there. Uh, they probably reached out to a couple of other people and other apps and teams. And yeah, because you were not the only one to do the same thing. Exactly, but what, the way we did it was very unique. The way we built our system, the way we built the app, not just the design of the app, but just the way we built um, the framework behind it, the mindset, I mean, a lot of things behind the scene 
were very unique and no one else did it. For instance, connecting apps. No, no other co calendar at the moment connect apps. They maybe connect Facebook, but we connected LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Foursquare, Meetup, uh, Eventbrite, uh, TV shows, uh, sports calendars. So we connected a lot of things on top of the calendar. And that was pretty unique at the time. So, and even still today, there are not that many people doing it. And so, so you had that first meeting in New York? We, we, so Microsoft came by in New York. It happened um, you know, really well. And then they went back. Um, by the way, I think more people from Microsoft showed up than the actual team in New York. <laughs> I think we were six in New York and eight people from Microsoft came. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it was kind of uh, yeah, funny and, and awkward. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually, um, they left and you know, started chatting with Pierre and I, like, okay, we're really interested. We really like the team, we like the mindset, we like the product, we like the vision, we like everything. So they wanted, they wanted us to sell and we told them, sorry, we just, by the way, just to mention that we just raised two months earlier in July. That was back in September, October. So we told them, no, we have money, you know, we just raised uh, six million, uh, we're, we're good, we're fine. Uh, and then you know they started you know chatting more and more, and they're like, "You sure you don't want to sell? Like you want to join Microsoft?" And and at the time again, like we're not talking about numbers. We're, we wanted to keep you know that discussion like as late as possible. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, um, well, they told us to make an offer, and, and so we had you know obviously some some discussions that went through, and and then it happened. <laughs> okay, so how did you um, uh, val valorize it? Yeah, yeah, like the value. How, how did you put numbers, you know, behind? When when you look at out. companies out there, I mean, there are a couple of things that go in it. Um, you want to look at the market, and obviously the market is super um, volatile. I mean, you know, one day to another, an ID can you know can be worth a lot of money, and tomorrow it can just crash, kind of like the stock, over, you know, in mar market. And and uh, and the thing is, for us, since we're a free app, we're trying to compare ourselves to you know mailbox. We also got acquired for a lot of money by Dropbox. We looked at just other products who were kind of, kind of doing the same thing, but different, and can kind of get a sense. And at the end, at the end of the day, when you have an acquirer, um, he just will pay the price he's willing to pay. So we were trying to challenge Microsoft to see how much they were willing to pay for Sunrise. So you start with uh, how much? You just you, you start with you know you, you always try. It's kind of like. You know, when you try to sell a house, you always try to, you know, put you know the price at the top. I mean, the highest price. But and it's then like go from one there. billion. No, 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 no. no. Well, you know, you want you want to be because the thing is, you also want to be realistic. You don't want to go too high. I mean, if if you come up with crazy numbers, they will not take you seriously. Right, right. So you have to take it. You know, you have. I mean, you have to be serious about it. You have to come up with you know numbers that make sense and also tell why they make sense. So you take other apps, but look, this app got acquired for that much, and they're doing this, and it's very similar to our yeah. model. But, but you have a certain point, like the, the number of uh, users. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that helps uh, too, exactly. Uh, the roadmap, what, what we had on, on the roadmap, the idea, and then eventually you go from there, you package the whole thing, and then you tell Microsoft, this is the price we have in mind, and then they will go down, or the, you know, they will tell you, okay, this is how much we can give you. And so that, that's it. And did you have any other big companies helping you with that? Uh, like big four or? Uh, no, we were doing it just Pierre and I. Plus really? Our, yeah. Plus our investor, uh, our main investor Bernard Liotto, who sold um, business object to SAP in uh, back in 2007, 2008. Um, so we yeah it was just Bernard, Pierre, and, and I, and I. So just the three of us discussing. Um, and yeah, that's how it happened. So. Wow. We had no one really to help us. Also, to be honest, we didn't know many people who sold companies, especially at that level. You know, you see a lot of companies getting a card for, you know, less. Yeah, and it's still yeah. a lot of money, but, you know, 10 million, 15, 50. But, you know, once you get in the hundreds and above, okay. it's a different uh, topic. And so we, we essentially, again, like that's why you want to have, you know, great investors and great people to be surrounded with because, or advisors, because you want to get people who can tell you kind of what to do yeah. or what they think you should do. Wow, yeah. okay. <laughs> so, and, and then, um, so you, you could uh, keep your team in New York? Yes. Or what was, you know, the, the, the frame of... So we, so, you, so usually you get um, kind of like a term sheet, mm -hmm. kind of like when, exactly the same thing that happens when you raise money, you have terms, you both agree on and sign them. 
you know, that you need lawyers to do that and sure. on both sides. Yeah. It's pretty classy. I mean, it's pretty, you know, casual uh, business as usual. Anyways, and, and you do that and then our, our terms was, was essentially to remain independent, keep Sunrise as long as we can, um, and uh, essentially integrate Microsoft while staying in New York, keeping our independence, at least, you know, our location, I mean, our office, and uh, somehow our independence with the team, et cetera. Okay, and so now Sunrise is fading out? Exactly, yeah, we're, or last year we announced that we, so it's been almost a year ago, we're um, joining Outlook, yeah. so and most, more specifically Outlook Mobile. Um, as you may have seen in the news recently, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft is not going to focus too much on Windows Phone. So they're focusing on the existing platforms, which are Android and, and iOS, uh, iPhone, iPad, which are really strong these days. So they're rather focusing on the apps on there and trying to be the best apps, um, five-star apps on the on the existing platforms. And Outlook gathering everything. Exactly. So Outlook has calendar, Outlook has email, Outlook has also your files and contacts. So we're, so we're focusing on that, but on mobile okay. specifically. Okay, so now Sunrise will not be updated anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, fanning out, the sunset is coming up. Yes. Or coming down. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> but yes. It is. Meanwhile, we're, we're going to try to bring all of the features that we had in Sunrise that people loved into Outlook. So that's what we're focusing on today. But does that mean that the team's going to be the same or that they're going to, a big change well, internally we, will happen now? Yeah, we've already transitioned to Microsoft, I mean, to the Outlook team. So our teams are already working with the Outlook teams in Redmond in San Francisco. So it's already, it already happened. And so now you're a design director? Yes. Uh, what does that mean? Um, I'm less, um, let's say I'm, Back in the days, during the Sunrise days, I was really into, you know, the nitty gritty, like focusing on details, every, I mean, crafting every UI, working on the UX, thinking about every single detail of the app. And today um, I've set up a team of designers, great designers in New York and San Francisco and managing the designers there to essentially do the work that I used to. And now it's, I kind of transitioned into more like a managing role. So it's been kind of a, also a great experience to go from more like, you know, being, you know, heads down in a product, you know, uh, um, as we say in, in Belgium, main dans le cambouis, you right. know, like dirty hands. And I'm um, like, you know, kind of like, um, I have like more a bird's eye view of what's happening and I can also plan ahead. So I'm more allocating resources based on what we need. So it's, it's been a very, very interesting transition. And, and also that's a question I want to ask you uh, during that uh, scale-up process. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you had to be a manager. Yes, exactly. And so how did you learn it or did you, did you hire somebody to manage the whole team? Or how did it's that been happen? just Pierre and I um, managing it. So again, like, I think the best experience is the one you learn you know, as by you yourself. go by yourself. So again, like, mm, you know, before, I mean, Sunrise, just in itself, then the acquisition, transition, I mean, there are so many things we've learned in such a little time. It's been kind of like a, a condensed version of, you know, how to go from A to Z, learn, you know, how to scale teams, how to go from you're doing everything to you have to delegate and yeah. be okay with not you being always on top. Okay. And delegate, does that mean other companies uh, around you dealing with uh, HR problems and things like that? Yes, that too. Like, I mean, um, when you're a startup and I'm sure a lot of people will recognize, you know, themselves, you're wearing so many hats and I used to do, you know, finance, kind of like CFO, <laughs> CEO, making sure we have drinks in the, in the fridge for the team team happiness, you know, everything with Pierre. And, and now all of a sudden you're just focusing on design and you have HR, you have marketing, you, have, you don't need to focus on all of these things. Um, you don't need to deal with journalists. There's a marketing team who does that for you. So indeed. Internally or inter externally? No, at Microsoft. Just oh, oh yeah, at Microsoft, but before Microsoft. Before it was just er everything we did it ourselves. Really? So, yes. The so HR, the communication. Everything, yes. Okay. So a lot of things, you learn, that's how you learn, you know, most of it. Sure. And so what's the secret recipe to have your employees happy or to keep um, happiness? At least so for us, I, I don't know if it's necessarily the, the only recipe, but our recipe that worked well is just making sure that you work with people you respect, people that respect you as a person. Um, it's very much a human experience. The start startup is, you know, you're so close to each other, you know, when things go down, you have to, you know, be, you know, 
very, uh, I mean, there's like a really important team bonding, you know, that needs to happen when everyone is happy, you have to celebrate together. So a lot of ups and downs, and it's, it's very much a human experience. If you're, if you're not, if you're not um, too close to your employees, it's not going to work out or it's not going to be the same. Okay. So I think to keep your, to me, to keep your employees happy, I mean, we had something, and to me it seems pretty normal. Again, like observations we had in our past experiences, um, Foursquare, et cetera. You know, you want, we have daily uh, one-on-ones with the team, uh, weekly one-on-ones with the team uh, members, so talk to each other, you know, are you happy, what's going on, um, if there's anything I can help with. Just tell your team that you're there, you're not just the boss. And, you're managing and then you're not showing up. One-on-one. One on, yeah. Okay. So one-on-ones are important. Rain check with your team. Um, those things are super important. And I think today we sometimes forget how important. I mean, we're, you're dealing with people, so that's the only asset you have. You have to manage it well. Mm -hmm. And then a tennis table and things like exactly. that. Exactly. Especially and being a Belgian, <laughs> you, you, you were <laughs> breaking the, the records. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, no, exactly. So you, you, want to, yeah, you want to focus on the people, definitely. Yeah, okay. I mean, then the, everything after is bonus. So, yeah, life after the buyout. Yeah, um, a, so, lot, of, a yeah. lot of things. Um, I mean, right now I'm still you know, at Microsoft, but you know, slowly transitioning into you know, other projects as well and thinking about, you know... Within Microsoft? Within Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft allows us to, you know, they have some flexibility, they allow us to work on, you know, other problems similar to what we're doing. And I mean, it's, there are a lot, I mean, Microsoft is a big company, so there are a lot of opportunities out there. Um, and, and we'll see. I mean, I haven't, I don't have a, a, a set timeline yet. Uh, I want to take my time and think about the next steps. Um, but definitely, something, and I'm sure a lot of people rec will recognize um, themselves as well, is when you're an entrepreneur and you started something, you know, you kind of got the virus. Mm. So, you know, even if you fail and you don't get an acquisition, through an acquisition or some happy, you know, happy landing, you want to start again. And I yeah. would say, like, as an entrepreneur myself, you know, I mean, yeah, I want to start yeah, something at sure. some point, but... And be free, completely free. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, yeah. Okay. But um, uh, so you have the, the money now in your account, or is that something that's going to happen in a couple <laughs> of years? Uh, you know, it's usually or not happen over time, so it takes a while to 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 get there. Because um, my, my next question was, uh, what what do you want to do? Did, did you have uh, a dream like, okay, if I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to buy you know, the, the <laughs> no. last Ferrari or what, whatsoever? No, I want to. I, I want to. Stay my, I, mean, I want to stay who I am. I want to, you know, I don't want to change. And I think everyone around me is, you know, happy that, you know, I'm not changing. So I want to keep my friends. I want to keep, you know, my family. I mean, I want to keep everything I have. I don't want to change. And so it, that's the most important part. I want mm -hmm. to just focus on the essentials. Um, uh, I've met other founders who are like super and way up there, you know, Airbnb, um, et cetera, you know, you meet people like you know at another level. You realize how humble they are. So I think you learn a lot from meeting other humble people. So Good, I want to yeah. be like them, and yeah. you realize well, even though they're super successful, mm -hmm. their life doesn't change that much. It's, so, yeah. it's 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 I think it's the best way to deal with that. Sure. And just be yourself. Yeah. Good for you. Absolutely. And. Um, and so are you investing in other startups? Uh, I have invested in other startups. Um, most right now only in uh, a handful of uh, startups in the US, uh, New York based for now. Uh, not just US, um, I mean, not just built by uh, Americans, also by Europeans. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm always interested in you know, great opportunities and great ideas and meeting great people. What kind of startups are the main? Or the, the one I invested in? Yeah. Um, well, one is more like a community-based, so building communities around uh, news and, um, and uh, yeah, messaging. Uh, and then another one totally out of tech scene, uh, it's a candle company. <laughs> Candle company, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> built by two former Google guys. I love the story. Um, I think it's great. <laughs> okay, you yes, know, sure. Two finance guys, I mean, two people working in finance at Google left and did a candle company. I think it's, it's just brill brilliant as a story in itself. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to invest. I think sometimes you have to be a little crazy and just take, you know, bold bets. 
So it's just, it will be like uh, per person, you, you will uh, trust the person, person and then... Uh, yeah, because again, as I mentioned, the exactly, at, in, in the other uh, topic, I think it's, um, you, want to, you want to build a trust, you want, you, want, you want to invest in the team first, you know, because who knows, they might pivot, you know, something can happen, they need to change, and if you truly believe in, you know, the execution and in the people, yeah. it's, it's the most important. So you will not look at, uh, at the, um, the finance, uh, I mean, I, I will obviously. I mean, it's, I think it's important as a, an, an investor. You want to look. You have. To, you want to get some sense of. You know. But again, like I think it makes sense if people are. You know, if if they fit the model you have in mind, you know, it's a no-brainer. I mean, I, I didn't have to look at the fin financials um, of the companies I invested in, but I trust them. It's a trust that you build, and you know that if you've invested in certain people, they will think a certain way. So it's a trust. Just like you know, people who trusted us. They didn't look at every little detail. They were just tr trusting us. Like, okay, here I'm, I'm investing in you. I trust you. You will do a good job. I, I, I want to do the same. Mm. <laughs> um, did you meet Bill Gates? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre has. Um, Pierre was fortunate enough to meet uh, uh, Bill Gates. Um, we, 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 Pierre and I had the opportunity to meet Satya, the CEO. He came to our office in New York, um, which was quite an experience. I mean, it wasn't Bill Gates, but it was Satya, uh, the new CEO, and he's a great person, a great guy. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to be, to be part of you know, such a big company, at least get to experience it. And, mm. and it's such a different model. So do you have any tips to go back from uh, our mm -hmm. previous chapters uh, on UX and UI? Uh, I, think, I think anyone, I mean, I think UI requires more being, becoming a great UI designer, visual designer, become, I mean, there's a skill to it. I mean, I think for UX as well, but I think UI, you really have to be good at it. It's kind of like drawing, you know, if you, if you want to be really good at drawing, you have to draw all, all day, you have to draw all the time, and you have to be, you know, the best at it. So there's really a craft to it. I think UX, since UX is so invisible and everywhere, but it can be tangible as well. Um, the experience is everything. It's making sure that you know the, cr the app doesn't crash. It's making sure that the sign-up flow works when people sign up. I mean, it's everything. It's code. It's design, code and code. I mean, it's the whole. It's the whole thing. And mm -hmm. I think again, like to me, UX. Anyone. I mean, we have seen it. Um, people at our company, even at Sunrise uh, and now Microsoft, they transitioned from being iPhone developer to UX designer because they're just so much into UX and they became really good at it. So I think it's a matter of practice. And that's why I believe anyone, you work in finance, just look at great products, get inspired, learn what they're doing well, what they suck at, what they're not doing so well, and how can you improve it? There are so many things, even Apple, they're still making mistakes. Everyone makes, makes mm. mistakes, and it's OK. Is there any uh, newsletters that you would recommend? I, mean, um, I would say, I mean, if you can, try to meet designers. First and foremost, I think if you can learn from actual people who are doing it, um, it's the best to be surrounded. You know, kind of like get a mentorship with them. Um, go to meetups. Maybe there are some meetups here. I, I'm not too familiar with, you know, just yeah, Brussels. They, they but but yeah, yeah sure. so try to meet with real designers at meetups. It's the best way to break the ice. It's a good icebreaker. Just go to places. And then online, I mean, we have the internet, we have the information, access to information. It's Any we, website you would recommend? Uh, um, the, the startups here? There are, I mean, I think the, there's, there's a, a fame, I mean, quote unquote, famous website for designers, but there's a, 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 a website called Patterns. So it's P, I think with, without an A, without the vowels. So P T T uh, R N R N S dot com. Okay. And they show mobile, mo mobile apps patterns. So how you type sign up flow or search, they show how, in different apps how they do search well. Okay. And you can get inspired. Okay, so if I have to build search in my app, I can do it this way. Nice, nice. So nice. you want to, I mean, there's there are a lot more resources out there, but um, mm. yeah, you learn the tools, um, learn to code. I mean, if you, if, you, if you have an idea and you want to build it, start learning. I mean, you have so many classes out there. Um, just learn. <laughs> so what's your next dream? Uh, I don't know yet. I want to, <laughs> it's a tough question. Um, I want to take some time to think about it. Um, I want to, I just want to, you know, be, yeah, just be uh, myself and think about, you know, the next steps. I'm not in a rush for anything. I think it's, you know, things shouldn't be rushed and we'll see, we'll see what's next. Um, I'll just 
let it go and see what happens. <laughs> okay, well, good luck. Thank you so much, Jaime, for Thank being you, with us and uh, giving us so many tips and feedback and experience. Thank so you. Congratulations again. Thank you. We'll see you soon.